On January 23, 1968, a U.S. Navy ship, the USS Pueblo, was captured by North Korea while conducting environmental research offshore. North Korea killed one sailor during the seizure. It held its 82 crewmen for 11 months and kept the ship as a museum. This incident has been cited for decades as proof that North Korea can never be trusted. However, evidence suggests that the secret mission of the USS Pueblo was to get captured. USS Pueblo was an American spy ship that collected signals and electronic intelligence. The Russians used fishing trawlers as a cover, pictured, but the U.S. Navy claimed its spy ships were peaceful environmental research ships, yet painted them navy gray with distinct U.S. Navy white lettering and crewed by U.S. Navy sailors. These ships would slowly cruise along the coast of target nations just outside their territorial limit to collect intelligence. This was no secret to anyone. The peaceful environmental research claim was a legal cover story. The first oddity of the USS Pueblo tale is that a week before it left on its mission, the Office of the Chief of Naval Operations ordered that two 50 caliber machine guns, pictured, be mounted on the ship. This had never been done before or since, since the cover story is that these are peaceful research ships that no nation can claim are a threat. The crew was never trained to fire these guns. No one has ever explained why these guns were mounted and why Navy headquarters in Washington, D.C., with a thousand ships to manage, demanded that two machine guns be mounted on the Pueblo, thus making it an armed ship. The next oddity is the Pueblo's mission was deemed low risk because it would remain in international waters at least 13 miles offshore. The ship's mission track is shown here. This danger was disputed by NSA insiders because North Korea had conducted a terrorist attack in South Korea a few weeks prior and initiated several firefights along the DMZ the past year. In addition, the North Koreans had complained about these spy ships to American officers at Panmunjom and threatened action. While most nations accepted the 12 mile from shore territorial limit, it did not become international law until the 1970s. North Korea had embraced the straight baseline limit like most nations, including South Korea, pictured here. The idea is that measuring a 12-mile limit on rugged coastlines with offshore islands is nearly impossible, and that straight lines were permitted in such cases, so long as no area is more than 24 miles from shore. There are also reports that North Korea proclaimed a 50-mile security zone from its coast where armed ships were not permitted, similar to the 100-mile zone the USA proclaimed off Vietnam. This is not to debate if the Pueblo was legally outside North Korean territorial waters, but to demonstrate the danger it faced since North Korea disputed the 12-mile limit. Moreover, there was no GPS in those days. To keep 12 miles offshore, the small Pueblo crew had to continually take fixes on shore features to include small islands 24-7. This task was often done by partially trained enlisted men. The North Koreans claimed radar tracked the Pueblo crossing the 12-mile limit several times, and it probably did by accident. The third oddity is that the Pueblo did not flee to safety when challenged. After it arrived just outside the key North Korean Wonsan naval base, it stopped dead in the water 15 miles offshore to spy. Two North Korean fishing trawlers passed by the next day, who reported the Pueblo, but it remained overnight. The next day, a North Korean subchaser, the small warship pictured, arrived at 11.45 a.m. and circled. But the Pueblo did not move. The subchaser signaled to demand identification and this was provided and the subchaser left. The Pueblo did not head to safe seas and return a couple days later as was done on all other patrols. American spy ships and aircraft routinely surveilled communist nations during the Cold War from outside the 12 mile limit. This angered nations who often dispatched ships and aircraft to confront them, especially when they often accidentally went off course to get a closer look and test the reactions of local air, air defense units. It was a cat and mouse game where the ship or aircraft would turn out to sea to evade inter intercepting ships and aircraft 
even if beyond the 12-mile limit. This was a dangerous game, and over 200 American airmen perished as American spy aircraft were shot down during the Cold War. Yet the Pueblo remained dead in the water while messages were sent to naval commands about the situation. No admiral ordered the Pueblo to seek safety, nor were any warships or aircraft dispatched as a show of force. At 12.20, 35 minutes after the ship chaser left, it returned with four small North Korean patrol boats as two MiG fighter aircraft circled overhead. The boats surrounded the Pueblo, pointing weaponry at the ship. The subchaser ordered the Pueblo to heave to, meaning to stop activities and prepare to be boarded. Captain Booker never ordered his two machine guns readied, and never even ordered general quarters, meaning combat stations, saying that might upset the North Koreans. Armed soldiers appeared on the deck of the subchaser that slowly approached the Pueblo. At this point, Captain Lloyd Pete Butcher, pictured, ordered the Pueblo to start its engines and head out to sea while the crew destroyed top-secret documents and spy equipment. The North Koreans pursued while demanding the Pueblo halt. After 30 minutes, they opened fire, but their weaponry was limited and caused little damage and four casualties. For unknown reasons, Captain Booker ordered the Pueblo to halt and surrender after just seven minutes of gunfire before most of the secret spy equipment and secret documents had been destroyed. The Pueblo was then 23 miles offshore and cruising at 14 knots and American aircraft support was expected. If the North Koreans managed to sink her, all the secret materials would sink too. The crew wouldn't last long in cold water, but the North Koreans would probably rescue them right away. American naval officers had endured bloody World War II and were stunned and angered by Captain Booker's timid action. He never ordered his crew of 81 to open the weapons locker and grab rifles and Thompson sub submachine guns to repel boarders before just eight Koreans stepped aboard and took them prisoner. That area of the world has a large concentration of American air and naval forces. No help was sent during the three hours from when the Pueblo was attacked until it docked at Wansan. Lots of excuses can be found, and perhaps admirals were ordered not to assist. But the most likely reason is that admirals were angry they were not informed about this secret mission and did not want to dispatch a few fighters to, the, to an area with hundreds of North Korean MiGs. Robert Liston argues in his 1988 book, The Pueblo Surrender, that the ship and its unsuspecting crew were offered as bait in a dangerous mission concocted by bureaucrats in the Secret National Security Agency, NSA, without approval by the White House or Pentagon. The centerpiece of the plot is a rigged code machine placed aboard the ship that the North Koreans would capture and use that would act as a back door to break communist bloc military codes. Liston doesn't prove his case, but the documentation and material obtained in interviews render his theory plausible. There is no doubt that many in the NSA sought to increase tensions in Asia, and that some thought the solution to the Vietnam War was to reconquer China by restarting the Korean War. The Pueblo's mission was risky, but the NSA mislabeled it as low risk to ensure the U.S. military was not alerted in advance. Captain Booker was known as a loyal and competent officer. Whenever asked about his actions, he insisted that he was following his secret orders from the NSA, quote, to the letter. When asked why the Navy inquiry recommended court-martial, Booker explained that the inquiry, quote, didn't go high enough to learn about the planning of the mission, end quote. And some transcripts of the Navy inquiry remain classified to this day. Booker was never cart marshaled because the civilian secretary of the Navy intervened. A court martial would have required the NSA to provide the court a copy of the Pueblo's top secret orders that would exonerate Booker and anger Navy admirals. You may recall photos of the captured crewmen of the USS Pueblo shooting the finger. That was interpreted as mocking their North Korean captors and everyone had a good laugh. Just after the crew was released, Captain Booker appeared before the news media to answer questions. When asked about the middle finger photos, Booker shocked everyone by stating his crew was displaying anger at American leaders because we'd been had. 
This was documented in Robert Liston's book. Quote, The finger gesture was widely assumed to indicate the disdain of the Americans for their captors. Booker gave another interpretation when he met the press immediately after his release. Booker was asked what the gesture meant. He replied, quote, They were trying to tell you that they'd been had. We realized that if we were discovered, it was going to be Katie bar the door. But we felt that it was important that we get that information out. So there would be absolutely no room for doubt in your minds, the American people's minds, that we'd been had. End quote. After Captain Booker's revelation that his crew was flipping off American leaders for sacrificing them for political objectives, the Pueblo crew was confined to a San Diego naval base for two months, where they were interrogated and constantly reminded their mission was top secret and they would be in prison for discussing the incident with anyone. Years later, White House audio tapes were made public that recorded President Johnson asking his Secretary of Defense what happened to the Pueblo when news first broke. Robert McNamara replied that he had no idea. McNamara later learned this odd incident was a provocation ordered by the secret government bureaucrats in the NSA. This explains why the United States did not retaliate, despite demands for military actions that might have restarted the Korean War. The U.S. government wisely complied with North Korea's demand to publicly apologize for the intrusion, and the crew of the USS Pueblo was released. 